feel really loud. Am I? Uh, can you turn? <laughs> For some people, I'm fine, right? Okay. Good deal. Hey, church, uh, next Saturday, we're having our uh, men's prayer breakfast, and I want to encourage you to come to that. We'll have Bible study, fellowship together, and a wonderful breakfast, I promise you. So, uh, love to have all our men and young young men come to that, and uh, right afterwards, for those that can, we're going to... Uh, do a little demo work over in our fellowship hall. Uh, we've had some issues in there. We need to take care of that. So I uh, would love to have you come. The more we get, the better uh, to help us out to get that job knocked out on uh, next Saturday. Uh, where did Caleb go? Caleb, okay. I do. You need a mic. You need a mic too. There you go. Lose it. There we go. Awesome. All right, so uh, as the school year is rapidly approaching, unfortunately, I know I said the S word for some of you teachers out there. I'm sorry. But um, we are going to start meeting as the youth group, uh, formerly known as Trek, now known as Ignite, on Wednesday nights. And as our youth room is currently out of commission, we are going to be meeting at a different host home every week. So this week for August 2nd, we're going to be meeting at the Evans's household at 5 o'clock. Uh, show up there with your kiddos who are starting seventh grade up here in the next couple of weeks. And we'll have tacos and fellowship and Bible study, and it'll all be a great time. So I hope that I can see you all there. And be on the lookout for August 12th for a Lake Day back to school bash at the Norris's house as well. So thank you all so much. All right. Thank you, Caleb. Okay, also um, in your bulletin you'll see a service survey, that's the uh, survey that we've had in the Sunday school rooms, it's also out in the lobby area, and uh, this is for the nominating committee, because the nominating committee is doing its work now, getting ready for the new church year, so if you haven't filled one of those forms out, even if you're a long-term member here and you know what you're going to do already, let us know. Uh, that you are still interested by filling those out and uh, also any other uh, things that you might like to do uh, make sure you put that on there as well and there is a place where you can write it in if we don't have it on that list uh, that is just kind of a, a general uh, survey and a lot of things in there we're not even doing but would consider if you if you indicate that you want to do that um, let's see we got a choir Choirs at work, Kevin. Y'all meet at 4:30 today. That's right for the choir practice. Anything else this morning? I don't know of anything. So let's all stand to our feet and greet each other as we continue this morning. Yeah. Hey. I didn't know if you forgot. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is with us, forever, forever, forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever, forever, forever. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong. Forever God is with us, forever, forever, forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God.
God is with us forever, forever, forever. Amen. We are glad that you're here to worship with us. Uh, we, wow, y'all got through with your visiting really quick today. Huh? <laughs> I'm really impressed. So well, much. if you're still visiting, if you'd make your way back to your seats, we're going to sing through the chorus of this, actually the verse and the chorus one more time. So let's sing from the rising to the setting sun. Let's sing together. From the rising to the setting sun, his love endures forever. And by the grace of God, we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Father in heaven, we love you, praise you, and worship you, God, and we just uh, thank you that you're still on the throne, and God, you're still in control. Lord, uh, we look to you as the great shepherd of our faith, and Lord, I, I just pray that this morning, God, that you would lead us, that you would guide us, that you would comfort us, and God, that you would give us everything that we need, and uh, Lord, I pray that in all that we do here, that we would honor your name. And the name of Jesus Christ would be high and lifted up. For it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen and amen. amen. We are glad that you're here today. Uh, today we're going to sing some songs about heaven. I know that as believers in Christ, uh, we have work to do on this earth. But we also look forward to that day when we're going to be in heaven with Christ and with all those that have passed before us. So we're going to sing several songs today that kind of talk about that, starting with an old song called When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. So let's sing together. If you're able to stand, stay standing, let's sing together. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning grace eternal, bright and fair when the saints of us shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, This world is not what it was meant to be. All this pain, all this suffering, there's a better place waiting for me in heaven. Every tear will be wiped away. Every sorrow and sin chain is broken. Oh, I want to go. Oh, I want to go home where every fear is gone. I'm in your 
open arms where I belong. Home. Lay down my burdens, I lay down my past. I run to Jesus, no turning back. Thank God Almighty, I'll be free at last. In heaven, in heaven, I'm going home where the streets are golden, every chain is broken. Oh, I want to go, oh, I want to go home where every fear is gone. I'm in your open arms where I belong. Hallelujah, I am going home where the streets are golden, every chain is broken. Oh, I want to go, oh, I want to go home where every fear is gone. I'm in your open arms where I belong, where I belong. Our scripture comes from John 14, 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. And where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. If you'd like, you can sit as we continue to worship together. My Jesus, I love thee. I know.
Amen. Amen. Thank you, choir, for that song. Well, we have been singing a lot about heaven this morning, and uh, the passage of Scripture that we're going to be looking at uh, will reflect that. You might not think so at first, but we'll get there, okay? The passage that I'm wanting to look at this morning is probably the most famous passage in all the Old Testament. As a matter of fact, as we look at this passage, I believe that it's probably the most famous passage of all times that is often quoted by believers and unbelievers alike. The passage that we want to look at this morning, we often use during funeral services. Well, we're not in a funeral today, and so we're going to take that back. Uh, I think that it is an appropriate passage for funeral services, but folks, this is a passage for the living. It is a passage for you and I. So if you have your Bibles, and would you turn with me to Psalms 23? Psalm 23, that's what we're going to look at today. What you know is the 23rd Psalm, so uh, we will... We'll talk about that. You know, someone said it is a psalm so simple that a child can understand it, yet so deep that a theologian could drown in. It's that deep. It's that kind of passage. It is my prayer that as we approach this passage this morning, as familiar as it is to us, that uh, you will not tune me out because you have read this passage so often, but more than that, my prayer has been that you'll not tune God out because I believe God has something to say to you today through this passage and how it relates to you and your life. Uh, I, as I read this passage and was thinking about it, I remembered a story that I read. It, it said one Sunday, the pastor announced that the church would read the 23rd Psalm, which they often did in this particular church. They read it in unison together. And then he quoted these words. He said, but will the lady who is always by in the valley of the shadow of death while the rest of us are still beside the still waters, please uh, wait for the rest of us to catch up? And uh, you, you've been there where we've quoted scripture like that before. Usually it's uh, someone younger, but they want to read fast and, and get ahead. Well, my point is that this morning I, I want us to slow down and just take it in and absorb what this passage has to say to us. So with that, let's all stand together and we are going to read out loud in unison together this most famous passage of scripture. By the way, this was written over 3,000 years ago. And it still stands today. So I'm reading from the New King James. Uh, if you don't have that version, it will be on the screen so that you can read along with me. Okay, here we go. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray. Father, we pray that you'd bless the reading of your word today. God, how it does my heart good to hear all the saints of God reading this passage of Scripture together. I pray, Lord, that you would use this passage to speak to us, change our hearts, God, draw us near to you as the great shepherd lead us this morning. And Lord, I pray for those individuals who are here Lord, who don't know you as shepherd in their lives. God, they don't have a relationship with you. And I just pray for them that, Lord, you would open their eyes and their heart that they might see, Lord, how much you love them, how much you care for them. And I pray, God, that they'd put their trust in you today. For it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen and amen. You can be seated. 
Most commentators, as you read, agree, even though it's not at the heading that King David read or King David wrote this particular passage of Scripture. As you study the life of David, of course, you know that King David's life was often threatened. We know that King Saul chased him and wanted him dead, tried to kill him on several occasions, but we also know that even his own son, Absalom, wanted King David dead. So there was a certain period of time in his life, I believe, that as David reflected on that, that he wrote this psalm. And in light of that, knowing that there were times that he feared for his very life, that he put this passage together and is one that even resonates in us today as we read it. I believe with that as a backdrop, though, that David wrote this psalm. Well, I believe as we look at this passage that there are four lessons that we learn from the shepherd. And we want to talk about those for just a moment, if you might. The first lesson that we learn is the shepherd provides everything we need. The shepherd provides everything that we need. Do you hear me? He provides everything that we need. The Lord is your shepherd. He says, you shall not want for anything more. The great shepherd tells us, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd, we're told, lays down his life for the sheep over in John uh, 10, 11. And in this passage, he says, referring to the shepherd, I shall not want. So the shepherd provides all that the sheep ever need so that they lack nothing, that they have all that they need. So as we look at this passage, though, he begins with the Lord. David only had one thing in mind when he said the Lord. He's not referring to a person. He's not referring to anyone else, but he's referring to the Lord God, the one true God. And that's who he's addressing here or who he's talking about here in this passage. The psalmist assumes that there's only one Lord. Well, who is this Lord? Well, the title Lord is used throughout the Bible. But in this sense, in the way that David used it, he's clearly referring to God, the Lord God. As we move over into the New Testament, we can uh, expand on this because over in the New Testament, the Bible says Jesus is referred to as Lord, and He is our Lord, Jesus Christ. You might recall the story of the blind man in John chapter 9. The blind man, Jesus approached, and Jesus asked him about his sight. He couldn't see, and the Bible says that Jesus spat on the ground, he made some clay out of, the, out of the dirt from the ground. He rubbed it in the blind man's eyes and he told the blind man to go and to wash in the pool of Siloam. And he went and washed in the pool of Siloam and re, his sight was restored. Now the, the thing about this man was that he had never seen in his life. He was born blind. So he's opened his eyes and now he can see. And they began to question the blind man about who this was that who had provided the healing. And he said, I don't know. I've never, I've never seen him. And then Jesus has an encounter with the blind man and tells him, he says, I'm the man that provided the healing. You know what the man said? He says, my Lord. And he worshipped him. So he referred to him as Lord. But the Lord, this Lord, this Lord that we're speaking of, what does the Bible say here? He is my shepherd. He did not say that the Lord is our shepherd. He said the Lord is my shepherd. King David, the Lord is my shepherd. He did not say that he will be my shepherd. No, he was David's shepherd right then. He was David's shepherd. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Now, as we approach this passage, we know David's using a metaphor here that people would have clearly understood in his day in the relationship between the sheep and the actual shepherd. And he refers to and he makes that analogy that he's like the sheep and God being the shepherd. So that's the relationship between the sheep and the shepherd. Well, who are the sheep exactly? Well, David saw himself as being one of the little sheep. And as we look at this passage, we find that our, sh our shepherd is God, but we are the sheep. So David likens himself as the sheep. He understood this very well because from the time he was a little kid, he was a shepherd and he shepherded sheep. So he understood the kind of relationship that he had with his sheep 
And he was saying that, hey, God has that kind of relationship with you and I as well. And in this passage, he said, the Lord provides everything I need. He didn't say he provides everything I want. You see, God provides everything that we need, not what we think we need, but God provides that need. What do we need? What do you need this morning? You've, you've come this morning. Some of you have come looking for answers from God. You have needs in your own life. But what are, what are some of the basic needs that we have? We all need food. We need water. We need shelter. We all need clothes. Okay. Uh, we need, there's a lot of things. We could go through the list, uh, litmus things of what we need. But folks, no doubt God will supply not what we think we need, but he will always supply what we need. But he, there's something else that God provides, and that is that he provides protection for his sheep. He provides protection for his sheep. But most importantly, what I want you to know that God provides is he provides salvation for his sheep. He provides salvation for you and provides salvation for me. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. And God offers to you today a relationship with Him. And He will provide for you salvation this morning. You see, God wants to save His sheep. He doesn't want any of them harmed. And He wants to save you today. And some of you this morning have come and you don't have a relationship with the Father like David had with his father, the shepherd, the great shepherd. And God offers to you today that kind of relationship. So who are we? We're sheep. Y'all smile. We're sheep. <laughs> We're sheep. You're sheep. And I'm a sheep. That's what David's talking about. The Lord provides everything I need. He, he provides all of that. The little sheep, David says, I shall not want because he protects me. I shall not perish. Why? Because He's God, He's the Lord, He's my shepherd, I shall not want. What a wonderful promise we have today. That God will provide, that God will provide everything we need. Now, if you didn't know this, sheep are not the most intelligent creatures of all God's creatures. Don't that make you feel good? <laughs> I came across an article, it was actually, this happened back in 2015, but I found this, Fox News reported 450 sheep leap to their death in Turkey. 450 sheep leap to their deaths in a Turkish village in Givas. The chain reaction started when one sheep went all over the cliff, enticing nearly 1,500 others to follow. According to the Askham's newspaper, by the time the 450 had died, the pile of sheep had grown so large that it began to buffer the fall of all the rest. There were over 20 families who had sheep in that area, and they had gotten together and were having some kind of fellowship and were not paying attention, and all because of one sheep, the rest of them just began to plummet off the side of that cliff. That's the kind of description that we have of sheep, and that's the way sheep are uh, today. They're not real, real bright animals. The Bible says all like sheep have gone astray and have turned everyone to his own way. You know, the shepherd sometimes must make us lie down in the green pastures. He has to lead us there because we're not smart enough to go there. So he leads us there, and he's the one who leads us beside the still waters. What is David trying to tell us? What he's trying to tell us, I think, is that we have a heavenly father, our shepherd, who has endless resources, and he will provide everything that you and I need. We don't have to go beyond God. He will supply and take care of our needs. Well, how does he do this? He speaks to us. He speaks to you. If you have a, a relationship with the shepherd, he speaks to you and he speaks to me. How does he do that? He, you know how he does that. He does that through the Word of God. He speaks to us through the Word of God. So as, as a sheep who needs direction clearly, I have to go to the Word of God. When do we get in trouble? We get in trouble when we go beyond the Word of God and we decide to do things our way rather than the shepherd's way. 
But you see, he wants to speak to us and he guides us and he leads us through his word. He talks to us and he tells us how to manage our homes through his word. He talks to us and he tells us how to manage his church through his word. He talks to us and he tells us how we're to manage our money. We do that through studying of God's word. He does not lead us into danger. God, he is a good shepherd and he loves us and he cares for us. And yes, folk, he's not like this great big figure out there that's some kind of monster looking for some way to squash us he loves us and he wants to take care of us when we get in trouble it's when we decide to do things the way we want to do them our good shepherd loves us and he cares for us he wants the very best for us by the way our shepherd's not dependent on the stock market our shepherd is not dependent on what man can do He is self-sustaining. He is almighty God, creator of everything that exists. The Bible says he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. So we don't have to worry when we come to our shepherd. He will take care of us. He will supply. He will take care of every need that we have. And for you and I this morning, the greatest need that we have is spiritual. And he will supply and he will take care of that need. If we come to him. And then secondly, the second lesson we learn here is a shepherd provides peace, the peace that we need. He'll not only lead us to green pastures, but what does it say? He leads us beside the still waters as well. Now, I don't know if you know this, uh, and, and I don't know this from experience, but just from reading this, but sheep will not go near raging waters and waters that are troubling because they're afraid of water. They're scared to death. You know, at home I have a, a dog named Coco. And that my dog Coco is, I have never been around a dog so afraid of water. When, when I change his water bowl and dump the water out, he runs for his life. I mean, he does not like, she, I'm sorry, she, she does not. She does not like water. Well, sheep are the same way. You know that a sheep will literally just go without water and die from lack of drinking water if they can't find calm water somewhere that they can drink water? And David says that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the still waters. Literally, the Hebrew word translates waters of quietness. Water is refreshing after a hard day's work, isn't it? And folks, when we don't spend time with the shepherd, when we don't spend time with him, we're going to find ourselves spiritually dry, and we will dry up. We will die spiritually, spiritually speaking. And as a believer in Christ, we we find ourselves just thirsty for God. And it's all because we wander away from him, but he leads us to tranquility. When we follow him, we have peace, the peace of God that passes all understanding. You probably still remember the story over in the New Testament of the woman at the well. This is what Jesus said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Talking about the literal water. They have to keep coming back for it. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Let me ask you something this morning. Do you want that kind of water in your life? I mean, that's spiritual water. And when we have that kind of water in our life, it is so fulfilling, it is so peaceful. In a world of chaos and sin and the muck and the mire, that's where we find our peace and where we find our tranquility. And it's a place that only God can take us to. Over in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 18, the Bible says, And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. As a matter of fact, when you read the Word of God, and I don't know where you are on this this whole topic of the alcohol, but drunkenness in the Bible is always sin, if you didn't know that. The Word of God bears that out. Drunkenness is always sin. Of course, when we're talking about drunkenness, how do you define drunkenness? That's, That's where we get into trouble. You know, some people say, well, I can just have a beer, I can just have a glass of wine, but... Does it lead to more and more and more? I mean, you know, I I firmly believe that for a believer, Jesus is enough. And so I just refrain from it entirely. I don't want to be a part of that. 
Because I don't know, I could be the one in four that become an alcoholic from putting alcohol to the lips. So why go there? Proverbs 23 says, Do not look on wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it swirls around smoothly. At the last, it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. And then over in 1 Corinthians says, Do you do not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Listen, we need Jesus more than we need things of the world. If we talk about the alcohol here, don't be filled with the alcohol to the point that we become drunk, but be filled with the Spirit. But folks, some of you are filling your lives with stuff that's junk. And you have no peace in your life as a result of it. And what he's saying is be filled with the Spirit of God. We come to Him and we accept Him as Lord and Savior of our life and then we begin to follow Him. We begin to study His Word. We begin to seek Him out. We come to church on Sunday. We sing praise to His name. But folks, that should go through the whole week. We should praise Him always. Then the third lesson we learn from the shepherd's psalm is the shepherd provides the restoration we need. Verse 3, what does it say? He restores my soul. He leads me into paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So what does he mean by this exactly? How can the shepherd restore your soul today? That's the question that we have to answer. Who's writing the psalm? David is. David knew what it meant to be a shepherd. How does this part of psalm relate to the sheep? Because David had the sheep in mind when he read this or when he wrote this. I did not fully understand this, actually, until I moved to Texas. But there is a term that's used, if you're a sheep herder, that's called a cast sheep. Some of you know right away what I'm talking about. I didn't know what what a cast sheep was, but a a cast sheep will wander off, and he might find a little uh, dig out in the dirt or whatever, and he'll relax and lay down, and before he knows it, he's up on his back, and his little legs would just be sticking up in the air. And the, the thing about it is, is he can't get back up. He's stuck. And the shepherd will go out and actually count the sheep. And when he doesn't find all his sheep, he starts looking for the little legs because he knows he's out there somewhere stuck. He can't get right side up. Well, what I learned when I came to Texas is, is that the same thing can happen to a cow in some respects. If a cow lays down, you cattlemen, y'all know this. And he doesn't get up, what happens? He dies. He can't lay there long. He begins to get get gas gas built up in his body, and he will die, literally die. I've seen this happen since I've been here in Texas with a bull. And the sheep are no different. When they lay there, they begin to build the gas up. And I know a lot of y'all understand this far better than I do, but it will kill them. They will die if they lay there too long. David says, he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. In other words, he flips us back up on our feet and gets us going again so that we don't die in that spot. God restores us. He restores our soul and then we can live on. Someone said that one thing we learn from history is that we don't learn. We keep repeating history over and over again, making the same old mistakes. And you know the definition of that, right? Insanity when we do that. The Bible says, I quoted part of this a while ago, all we like sheep have gone astray, and everyone has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. You see... We need the Lord. God provided for you and I through His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ went to the cross, paid the price for our sins. He paid our iniquity. He paid that price for our iniquity because God has laid on Him the penalty, the full penalty of our sin. 
When we allow Him, when we allow the Lord to restore our soul, we follow Him. Where does He lead us? He leads us in the paths of righteousness. What does that mean? He leads us in the path of right, not rightness and doing what is right before God. Sheep cannot stay in the same place too long because we know that they will destroy the land if they do. They're not smart enough to move on to green pastures, so they need the Lord who will lead them in to green pastures. Verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now what do we relate this to in, 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 the, uh, in a funeral service? We, we always talk about this, living in the, the valley of the shadow of death. Well, the shepherd would lead the sheep many times off the mountaintops and lead them down into the valleys. Sheep do not want to go there because of the shadows. They're afraid. So they don't like to go there, but he'll, he'll lead them down in the valleys. But what does this say? He says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The shepherd doesn't intend to leave them in the valley. What do you find in the valleys when you get down there? Usually that's where you find the creek, right? And you begin to follow the creek. And if you follow it long enough, you're going to come back out to the green pastures on the other side. So he leads them down in the green valley. Guess what? It's hot up here. It gets cool down in the valley because you get near the water brooks. And he takes them down there and he leads them on out. I want you to know something. The shadow of death starts the day you draw your first breath. And then it grows larger and larger as you live because you know death is looming. But folks, God is leading us through the valley of the shadow of death. Why? Remember what we sang about a while ago? Heaven, we're headed home. And there's green pasture on the other side. We think it's green now, folks, but I got news for you. You haven't seen anything yet. We're headed home, and the, the shepherd is leading us through that valley because one day we're going to break through. One day we're going to pass from this world to the next world, and we're going to be with the Lord forever and ever. So no matter what we face, no matter what we go through here, we know that our Lord, our Savior, He will take care of us. He will meet our needs, and He will walk with us through that and lead us to greener, pas pas uh, greener pas pasture than we've ever seen. Last of all, the shepherd provides comfort that we need. Last part of verse 4. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now it's important to note what the rod and the staff were used for. The rod was not used to beat the sheep. The rod was used to beat off the wolves, to beat off the lions, to beat off the bears. And I'm told that sometimes the rod that they used would even have like nails in the end of it and it would hang off the belt. But you know what? The sheep never worry about the rod because the rod was used to take care of them and to protect them. And then the staff we know with the hook in the top, what does the shepherd do with that? He guides the sheep. He might have to tap them a little bit here and there to keep them on the path. Or if they fall off uh, a, a ledge somewhere, he can take that round part, wrap it around their throat. He can pull them back up to safety with it. It's always used for their good. That's why he says, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, comfort me, comforts me. God is always comforting us he is our comforter we don't have we don't use the rod and the staff today but we do have the word and we do have the holy spirit so what is god what is what do we we have the word is a sword this is the sword of god we we use the word and then we have the holy spirit the holy spirit what does he do he guides us and he helps us and he comforts us David knew the Lord. Folks, Jesus Christ is the same God that David worshiped and trusted with his very life. In the last part of verse 6 it says, And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want you to know something. David's not thinking about church. He's talking about heaven. He's talking about dwelling with the Lord forever and ever. How could David say that? Because he knew the Lord. He says, The Lord is my shepherd. And he knew that he would dwell with the Lord forever and ever. Hebrews chapter 13 says this, Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, 
make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. The question, the question for you is, do you know the shepherd? Do you know the shepherd? There's a story that was told about a priest who is celebrating his 50th anniversary of his ordination when he went in the ministry. And for this occasion, he invited his personal friend, Richard Burton, who was an actor, to come to that gathering. And he asked Richard Burton if he would quote the 23rd Psalm, which Richard Burton knew very well, even though Richard Burton professed to be an atheist. And he would quote that psalm at his gathering. So at the point in time, Richard Burton stood and he proclaimed the popular psalm and he did it with grace and a lot of flair and did it so well that the people stood and began to applaud when he finished reading the 23rd psalm. Now Richard Burton, when he was invited to come and the priest asked him if he would do that, said, I will, but you'll have to do it after I do it. So the priest stood, and he began to quote the 23rd Psalm. He was very old, his voice was crackling, and he couldn't speak very well. But before he could get through the psalm, the people in the audience began to weep as he read the psalm. And when he got finished, someone leaned over to Richard Burton and says, everybody applauded when you read the psalm. But they began to weep when he read the psalm, to which Richard Burton replied, I know the psalm, but he knows the shepherd. And the question for you today is, do you know the shepherd? Would you bow your heads with me? Maybe this morning... You do know the shepherd, but you've wandered away, not feeling as close to the shepherd as perhaps you once were. But folks, like that cast sheep, the shepherd wants to stand you back up on all four legs that you might live. And he will, if you'll let him. Perhaps this morning you're here and you say, Pastor, I don't know the shepherd. It's reflected in my life. I need to come to him for salvation. Enter into a relationship with him. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Then in Romans 6.23, the Bible says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. The only way you can have a relationship with the shepherd, the only way that he can lead you is through his son, Jesus Christ. Perhaps this morning you need to come to Christ. Perhaps this morning you need to come and maybe for the first time in your life repent of your sin and ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord, your shepherd, to be your Savior. Whatever your need this morning, after I pray and we begin to sing, follow the shepherd, he will not lead you astray. Lord, we thank you for what we've heard. We thank you for this wonderful psalm that you have left to us. I pray, God, that we draw close to you, that we would not wander off, that we'd not get lost. Oh, God, I pray. For that individual that's here that has never come into relationship with you, I pray this morning, God, that you would convict their heart of sin and unrighteousness. And 
I pray, God, that they would see their need for a Savior and be saved today. Oh, God, you know the hearts of every person here. You know their need. And Lord, you've promised that you'd provide and take care of those needs. So we're asking you to do that right now, would you? Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's stand together as we sing.